Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. Today we're answering how questions from Google about scuba diving. So let's dive straight in. How do scuba divers stay underwater? With heavy lead weight. When you see all of the equipment and then the gear that we wear, you'd think that we sink, but we're surprisingly buoyant as human beings and a lot of our diving equipment is also fairly buoyant. You know the old helmet divers, the big brass helmets, they had to wear lead lined boots and a huge weight on their chest to even make them sink. Granted they had this huge airspace to try and pull under the water, but with modern recreational diving, it's not quite as extreme as that, but we do still need to wear lead weights on some kind of belt to help us stay down. So the lead helps us get down and stay under the water, but we still need to breathe. Now, free divers, they can hold their breath, they can swim around and pop back up after a few minutes with some training, but to be able to stay down for like half an hour to an hour or so, you're gonna need a cylinder of compressed gas to breathe from. The deeper down you go, the faster you're gonna breathe through that gas because you're under a lot of pressure. So the deeper and the longer that you want to stay underwater, you just need to bring larger and more tanks with you. How does a scuba mask work? Your mask is one of the most simple pieces of equipment. You can get some really complicated masks with lovely features and fancy materials and stuff, but put simply, you just need an airspace and a piece of glass in front of your eyes to be able to see underwater. I mean, have you ever opened your eyes underwater? It's all kind of fuzzy what you can see. It stings a little bit in salt water. That's all because your eyes are designed to focus up here in air. Water as well kind of bends light in complicated ways and our eyes just don't work well underwater. It's not what they're made for. And we need an airspace in front of our eyes to be able to see and focus properly. By holding a piece of flat glass, I'll get to why it needs to be flat in a moment, you'll have a soft silicone skirt that seals around your face and over your nose to hold the air inside the mask. A mask strap has a ratchet strap to tighten it as it hooks over the back of your head and then holds the general mask in position. And that's about it really, masks are pretty simple. Your nose is covered up so that you can equalize and that water doesn't go up your nose. Um, and the glass has to be flat in front of your eyes because any kind of curved lenses become magnifying glasses when they're in contact with water and it's really just gonna hurt your eyes. How much does a scuba mask cost? Anywhere between like 10 quid and 200 quid, um, but the sweet spot is somewhere around 60. Cheaper masks, like under 25, uh, the skirt is usually gonna be made from something like Silita, which is a much harder silicone substitute that isn't gonna seal as well or as be as comfortable and it's gonna start to go nasty after about a season or so. It really hardens and discolors. So you wanna stay away from silica and look for silicone on your mask. As soon as you get to like the 30 quid point, uh, you're getting proper silicone, decent glass and a fairly good fit, but the finish probably won't be perfect um, and you won't get a great deal of technology when it comes to your mask. The more you spend, the higher the quality of glass you're going to get and you might find a treatment as well to that glass lens that filters out UV light or something to protect your eyes or enhance what you're seeing underwater. The silicone will be a much higher quality, especially around the ceiling surface that actually touches your face. The overall finish of the mask is just going to be higher. Cheaper masks, they'll have those, those little bits on the edges that haven't been cut off quite properly. And you'll find a better field of view as well when you're looking around underwater. Ch cheaper masks, they can kind of give you tunnel vision just because of their design. And when you switch to a premium mask, you can just see a whole lot more. So it's definitely worth investing a little bit in your mask. Can I scuba dive without knowing how to swim? 
uh, technically, yes, uh, you can take part in a try dive, but of course that is up to the instructor's discretion at all times. I mean, I've taken people who couldn't swim a length of a swimming pool underwater, but that was one on one and in a very confined swimming pool so that they could experience scuba diving safely in the safest place properly. Sure, they're not the best at moving around in the water, but they can still experience what it's like to go scuba diving. And of course, you're never too old to learn how to swim. Where not being able to swim will hold you back is the very first scuba qualification. Uh, before you do any water skills, you need to demonstrate certain water skills, such as swimming a certain distance and treading water for a certain amount of time. And of course, there's no way to cheat your way through that. If you want to learn how to scuba dive but you can't swim, that's great. Use that as a goal to aim for, but being comfortable in the water is quite important. So sign yourself up for some swimming lessons and spend as much time in and around the water so that you know how to move and breathe on the surface and then we'll teach you how to breathe underwater. How do you tread water? Yes, you have to tread water or float uh, on the surface for about 10 minutes unaided at the start of your course. This is just if somehow all of your equipment failed and like just dissolved in the seawater and you're left alone in the water and had to survive on the surface. Normally you just inflate your BCD uh, and ditch your lead. Your lead makes you sink, so you want to get rid of that and you inflate your BCD so that you float nice and comfortably on the surface. But without any of that equipment, your first action is to work out if you can just float without even moving. You want to be able to conserve as much energy and with a full lung full of air in salt water, a lot of people can just relax and float on their back. It's a little bit harder in choppy waters with waves sort of crashing over your face, but a lot of people can just float in water. You don't need to waste a lot of energy treading water. Some people though cannot float. So in that case, use your legs to kick in a downwards motion. Uh, if you look up a, uh, an egg beater uh, sort of kicking motion and try not to breathe out fully so that you stay as high up in the water as possible. Try and uh, sort of keep your breathing between like 50% so your lungs are half empty or half full depending on how you look at life uh, and 100%. So you've always got a, a fair amount of air inside of your lungs and that is helping you stay buoyant on the surface. Try not to exhale all the way because then you're going to start to sink down and you're going to have to waste more energy. So just inhale a bit. I mean, for your dive master, when you get into like professional levels, uh, you have to do a portion of treading water with your hands out of the water. So if you can learn how to do a survival float, it is much, much easier. There are a few questions from Google answered, but if you have any questions, let the community know down in the comments below and they'll get back to you. And if you want me to talk about it on Friday's Ask Mark, use the hashtag Ask Mark in your comment and subscribe to the channel. Then, of course, simply head over to simplyscuba.com for the latest scuba diving equipment. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving.